Hello to humans, Master Dinnerflex here, bringing you the low quality content you deserve, and today I will be going over, apparently my yearly event somehow, three more engines you should try in your deck list. Now originally I really wanted to do these videos a little more frequently, but it is what it is. Um, regardless, I wanted to show these three off. I've told you about a few of them in earlier videos, but I think I want to demonstrate these all three because I think of all of them, Certain ones of these, I think, directly will translate to future interactions in the game. Whereas others, it's hard to tell, but it's more so that, like, they're very efficient and you can find a deck list to use them. So with that, we're going to go into engine number one, and that is Allure Queens. Now, I did a video on this earlier, but now I want to give you a real Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro replay channel sample platter of what this deck can do, because this is not a real deck list. But it is a real continuation of how this engine can play out. So let's go ahead. Allure Dance is what you need to start with. And the other card you will need is a light or dark monster. And that is about it. Um, this will allow us to get Chaos Allure Queen, which is what sets up this whole engine. So you can discard one light or dark monster. Just special summon it from the hand. Uh, then you can target a monster in the graveyard. Equip it to this card. And if it's a light or dark, um, you can special summon a Allure Queen monster from your deck. So we are going to equip it to Ancient Brain, which is just a dark monster, to Chaos Allure Queen. And that is going to get us Allure Queen level 7. And this is a demonstration of how crazy this rank 7 engine is. Because this is a rank 7 right here. But you can also do a few other things with this engine. Like uh, if you summon Allure Queen level 3, that is both attributes for Chaos Angel, which is nice. Uh, next, we are going to overlay these two into Draco Sack. And Draco Sack will detach a material to summon two level three tokens. And we will turn those level three tokens into Cherubini. And with Cherubini, we are going to dump Water Enchantress of the Temple, which is what I meant when I said this is pretty much a sample platter of all the Yu-Gi-Oh! replay channels because not only are we going to get to the full adventurer package, um, we are going to use uh, Allure Dance coming up soon for even more. So we will get the token and then Fateful Adventure. Now something I do right here is um, I want to keep the number of randoms maximized. So what I do is I go back and uh, I go back to before I search this and summon Unicorn right here. So pretend this is still in the deck. And that will allow me to get uh, the equip spell, which I'll just go ahead and equip immediately or have in my hand... And then when I search Wandering Griffin Rider, I'll discard the equip spell, which will equip to the token. So basically, I keep the same number of random cards in hand. But now we are going to use Allure Dance's other effect, which you can send a car one other card in your Spell and Trap card zone to the graveyard to special summon as many Allure Queens from your graveyard as possible. And we will summon both of the Allure Queen level 7 monsters, which we will then link the Unicorn and that one Allure Queen into the new Lightless Shadow, which this card is insane. I don't even think this is the only replay I have this in. This is like basically bordering on the new Apollosa. It's kind of insane. But regardless, we are just going to use it immediately. We're going to toss a random card out of our hand, banish it to get back to level 7. So now we just have a floating Link 4 coming back. And now we will use the other broken Rank 7 that can actually be used with this engine. Because this is what I will say about uh, this engine. The most powerful resource it can utilize are Rank 7s. But rank 7s themselves are not particularly that powerful. Not to say that there are no good ones. More to say that there are very few good ones. And it basically boils down to Draco Sack and uh, Arsenal Falcon. Which, it, by the way, is where I would say if you're wanting to make an actual deck list out of the engine, uh, you could go for Fateful Adventure stuff. Or you can put this in Raid Raptors, that, which is a deck that guarantees you Dark Monsters. And in addition, this engine will guarantee you a rank 7 without a normal summon, which is very powerful. Um, so next, we are going to use Arsenal Falcon and we are going to summon Zephyros the Elite out of the deck. Then we are going to link away those two Dark Birds into Wise Tricks, which will summon a level 4 Dark Bird out of the deck. We can't use it as a link material, um, but we are going to go ahead and bounce a Lure Dance for Zephyros. We'll take our 400 damage and then we'll overlay them both. Or four Strix, which we can detach a material to get a Raid Raptor, which by extension, Wise Strix will now search us a rank up spell, and we will set it Soul Shade Force. Next, we will special summon the Singlanius, our search target, 
And we will also summon the Raider's Wing out of our graveyard. So now we're pretty full on board and we have plenty of resources. Not only do we have all this to work with, but on the follow-up we get to like summon more monsters, which is nice. But we are going to continue. We are going to link those two away into a very scary Protector Whelp of the Destruction Swordman, which you might know where this is going because we are going to dump a uh, Dragon Buster. Next, we will overlay those two Dark Monsters into Evil Swarm Nightmare. And because Raider Wing, Raider's Wing is a material, it is immune to targeting. Then finally, we will activate Soul Save Force, pay half our life points. That will summon out the y, uh, Force Tricks, which we will then use as a material for a rank 6 monster. And in a very scary manner, we will summon Insector Exabeetle. And this card on XE Summon can equip a monster from your graveyard to it and gains half, half its attack and defense. But when it's an equipped spell, Dragon Buster says your opponent cannot special summon monsters from their extra deck. So, um, they are locked out of the extra deck while this is equipped to a monster. However, you might notice this monster only has 1,200 attack. But we have a benefit to this. So let's go ahead and go to our end phase, where we will get Lightless Shadow back. So on our board, um, this can prevent any normal summon from just running Exit Beetle over, because you can discard a card to pop it. But in addition, any special summons that might try to overwhelm the field, like, um, I don't know, wh whatever would overwhelm the field, like a Kashtira monster, you can just book it. So they can't run over it with this. And then finally, even if they squeak a monster on board to attack over this, unfortunately, Fateful Adventure says once per turn, if a monster equipped with an equip spell, which is this, would be destroyed by battle, it is not destroyed by battle. So, unfortunately, your opponent has to destroy this by battle twice and has to do it with three or more special summons and one of them is going to be popped. So they have to establish four monsters on board. Uh, hold on. They have to... Um, establish five monsters because they have to have two to actually successfully attack and then two to bait out the nightmare and then one to bait out this and they have to do it all through an Omni Negate. So as you can see this is a tough shell to crack. Um, <laughs> that being said this is absolutely a sample platter. I do not think you could make a real deck list like this. However this isn't exactly incorrect. I think this is a uh, a very good demonstration of how you can use rank 7s to utilize some pretty degen stuff. And that's why I wanted to show off this engine in the first place. Because there's like, even though rank 7s are kind of dated with all of their card pool, there are still some that show to impress. And I think, if anything, this board is at least impressive. But now that we got this engine out of the way, let's move on to the next one. Now, well, this next, well, the last one was very, very sample platter. Look at all these garnets. To demonstrate something hilariously cool where you would go about like optimizing, obviously. This one is the exact opposite. This one is going to be a very neutral, simple engine that has been very optimized for a card you might not expect. And that card is Ib, the World Chalice Justice Seer, the very epitome of, I'm gonna put this in a DGen combo deck. But something I've noticed about it um, is that it's not very efficient. Obviously it adds many many garnets to a deck list to do something that's kind of neutral unless you ftk but the amount of garnets needed for any ftk with it is overwhelming so early this year when this card came back i was like this card didn't need to be banned it could have been brought back honestly in 2022 people were so scared by it and we've had a whole year to prove it was not a scary card but this is something i was thinking of early on the problem why this card wasn't ban worthy is it's not efficient so if we were to use this card efficiently, what would it look like? And that were to go with level twos. Because Emergency Teleport, very generic, open-ended card. You could summon Ghost Ogre and a whole bunch of random stuff with it. This isn't like a cost to your deck list. Not only that, um, you could play the new Primite cards. With the demo I'm going to show you soon, it won't apply there. But you could play the new Primite cards and like get a normal summon banish with it. But outside of that, it's a very, very very efficient combo because we are going to have this one normal monster as our true garnet um and all you need is another level two monster to show this and we are going to go ahead and synchro these two away because the normal monster can be treated as a tuner for ib because it's a world chalice monster and our search target will just be succession so this is the grand total of what this engine asks actually ask you for three emergency teleport one actual garnet and a monster reborn like, that is 
incredibly efficient, and you're not missing out on the final effect of it either, because once you link it away, uh, this is a perfect demonstration of just opening it in a level two. You can go ahead and summon Gravity Controller, which will let the Ib float back into the, quote, tuner. Um, so you not only didn't need another card in your deck to utilize Ib to its fullest potential, but now we can go ahead and activate the Reborn to summon Ib and then synchro these two off into a level eight, which will be Dragite. And we do have a water engrave for it, which is Ib itself. So obviously a very, very, very efficient way to turn a level two in an emergency teleport or a primate whatever and to just like an additional interactions but this isn't the extent of it because first off you use a spellcaster tuner so in reality you could also go for the magistus uh synchro that locks extra deck mechanics which is crazy but outside of that you don't actually even need to use it in that context you could just use it uh as an additional source of bodies which is what we i am going to show off now is I'm going to use Ib in the context of a level 2 deck to do nothing except generate extra bodies. And for that deck, let's use Live Twin. Now we are going to normal summon Lilo, which will get Kissy Kill. And then we're going to activate Teleport to get this level 3. And we are going to Synchro a 2 and a 3, which will be Lilla specifically. And then the normal monster into Ib, which will get a succession. And we will link the Kissy Kill and the Ib into... Um, Evil Twin Kissy Kill, and then the Ib will float back into the normal monster. Now, we can use Kissy Kill to get back Lilla, and then we'll go into Evil Twin Lilla, which will get back Kissy Kill, which will get us a fresh draw. And then, we are going to link the Chosen by the World Chalice and the Evil Twin Kissy Kill. So, if you don't want to play these cards, you would obviously uh, try to use this before you start cycling these to make a Dragite. But if you want to play these cards, you know why I need another Light Fiend Engrave. Because we are going to link that Light Fiend into, of course, Fiendsmith Requiem, which will go into the Fiendsmith package, uh, Crimson Tears to Domp. And you've seen this. Then we're going to equip this, and we are going to Contact Fuse. And to Necroquip, we will shuffle back a Light Fiend, which is why we needed the extra name. And then, of course, that will allow us to make the link to which will allow us to fusion summon using uh, Fiend Smith and two other Light Fiends into uh, the Omni Negate fusion, which is the targeting Omni Negate. I do not remember its name, but we are not quite done yet. Next, we are going to link those two off into the Link 3, which uh, you can quick effect revive a Light Fiend, uh, and then it, it comes equipped to that. So we have three cards this can negate. So if you somehow don't know this card's effect, you can target card, quick effect target card, negate, it doesn't target. Um, cards on the field up to the number of link uh, rating all the links equipped to it are. So obviously it can negate multiple cards like this. But we are going to go ahead and activate Succession. And we are going to revive a link to which we can turn it and Lilla into Sunny. Which we can tag out the Sunny. And to both the little ones. Which we can then make, of course, once again, Lightless Shadow. Which we can then toss a uh, card to revive the Sunny, and then during the end phase, which we can also equip this, by the way, to uh, the Fiendsmith, and then we can go ahead and get back Lightless Shadow back. So we got a pop draw here, another pop here, and then multiple, multiple in the gates, and all we had to do is really uh, happen to open Teleport in addition to what we were already doing, um, which is kind of nice. And obviously there are more efficient ways to do similar stuff, and in addition, if you don't actually want to play the Fiendsmith cards, you can just go ahead and make Dragite, and this would be your end board anyways, except this would be a Dragite, um, which is kind of nice because uh, Live Twins don't really have a way to interact with spells and traps, which is why you'd want to play the Fiendsmith engine anyways. So, uh, like, to having access to Dragite off of just a teleport in your deck list is kind of nice. But, um, yeah, that's basically what I wanted to show off here. It's a very efficient engine, which I guess is the core issue Ib. Um, creates when you try to put it in your deck list. It adds so many more inefficiencies to what you were already doing. Um, a lot of clutter needs to go in to generate a bunch of monsters with this. But rather than do that, you could like put some very basic cards in here and really it only have one Garnet to go with it and it still generates some tuners and extra monsters for you. So you can still be pretty efficient with this card. But now that we got that out of the way, let's get to the final engine. Now for this final engine, as you saw in the last video, Really, all you need to do is have any of these starters and it will get you access to everything. 
Now, depending on the deck you're playing and the type of starter you get to will heavily depend on how this inboard can look. Um, like, for example, Crystal Rose uh, can revive itself back out of Graveyard when you link away a fusion and have it engraved. Um, and in addition, opening Dispersion is probably the weakest example of it because uh, once you use Search, you can't do it again for, like, Nephrium to go search a Gem Armadillo. So obviously, you have to be kind of careful with um, how you sequence these cards. But regardless, let's go ahead and demonstrate the engine. And for this opening, we will use Nephrium, which on normal summon, uh, well, let me show the number of random cards in hand. We will go ahead and get Dispersion, and Dispersion, we will use the second effect to search Gem Armadillo, which will use Nephrium's effect to then, of course, normal summon it to get another Gem Knight card, which will be Void Roots. Next, we will special summon Void Roots by dumping a Gem Knight fusion. And what I want to say with this engine is it, no matter what, you can always end on like a Link 4, a Mechaba, and a Gym Knight Fusion monster with Void Roots in Graveyard. And that's like really undercutting it, which is crazy efficient because you also end up with a normal summon to play whatever other deck you decided to go with. So we are going to link those two off into Phantom Quartz, which will get us the other copy of Dispersion, which we will then use as Brilliant Fusion to dump Nephrium and then another Gym Knight monster which we will then toss a card out of our hand uh, to also have <laughs> Seraphonite because Nephrium will revive itself in Grave and we have the Seraphonite up. So we can overlay these two level fours and that's where I want to say this engine will now begin to... Dis you will now decide what this engine wants to do based on what you have right here. Because if you want to put this engine in another deck, you are given an additional normal summon and two level fours for any rank four in the entire game. And we still have not even used Phantom Quartz yet. So we still have a lot we can do. But I wanted to I want to say, if there is going to be an engine here that's actually going to directly find itself in the meta deck, this is the most likely one to do it. So I might as well actually respect that. And let's summon Ryzeal Duo Drive. We are going to detach both materials to search two Ryzeal monsters. Um, so we will search Node and we will search Ice. Next, we will use our additional normal summon, or our third normal summons from Seraphonite. We will summon Ice, which on normal summon will special summon uh, Thode, which is an interesting name. And this one will search a uh, Light Pyro. Next, we will link... Uh, well, I have to move this over there because I summoned in the wrong zone. We will link that Fire Thunder and this Light Pyro into, of course, Alistair, the Invoker of Madness. Then finally... We will use, well, we'll get back to Gemini Fusion first, and then we will use Phantom Quartz, pay 1,000, and we are going to recycle one of the Nephriums, and then one of the Void Roots, because we have two in Grave. Uh, and that will summon another Seraphonite, which of course will trigger the Invoker of Madness to get an Invocation. And this is where we can make that link forward, just with Invoker and Phantom Quartz. And we will summon Unchained Abomination, and we will banish to get back Gemini Fusion again. Next, we will link these two off, the other Seraphonite you don't need, and the Thode, into SP Little Knight. And next, we will Special Summon Node, so now we are locked into only summoning level 4s and rank 4s. Now we will t use Node to toss the Gym Knight Fusion to go ahead and revive the Thode. Now one thing I am going to do right here, because I forgot to do it, uh, I forgot to activate Invocation. So before I summon uh, Node... I'm going to go ahead and summon Mechaba, banishing Alistair and one of the lights, which I believe I banished the ice um, for Mechaba. So we will then <laughs> pretend I did that first, and then we will summon Dead Nader, which is a ridiculous name, and it will attach a monster as a material. So what is our end board? Uh, well, first off, we have Gym Knight Fusion to guarantee Mechaba's spell, which is nice. So this is bordering on a complete Omni Negate. This does have an Omni Negate with Void Roots because we have uh, four Gym Knight cards in Grave. Uh, we had have Dead Namer for whatever reason. Uh, this is three pops, and then with Abomination, it can actually be four pops. And then we have the SP Banish. And then finally, I noticed, you probably noticed, I did not need to search uh, nearly as much as I did um, with this. Like, So regardless, I could have kind of just searched a more relevant uh, Ryzeal monster. But that's neither here nor there. But regardless, this is the end board we're working with, and dang. If this was the regular Ryzeal deck, this would be your end board. 
But by putting a random Gym Knight card in here, this is your inboard, which is hilarious. Um, this is why I believe this engine is the most likely to be kind of meta relevant, is because not only is it incredibly efficient and incredibly synergetic with many other decks you can put it in, but look at this. Like, you get a Link 4, a Mechaba, and a Seraphonite just with this engine in whatever you put it in. And you still get the normal summon to play your other deck, which is... Honestly, kind of uh, terrifying. But regardless, that's going to be it for me. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And hopefully you got some ideas of maybe how to use these engines. Because the Gym Knight engine is kind of a bit away once we get uh, the next series of dual terminal cards. Um, the Alert Queen stuff, we have the monsters. The spell, however, is probably going to be a little bit for us to get. And then finally, Ib, we have total access to everything except literally a uh, Lightless Shadow. But on the horizon, we are getting some pretty cool engines. Um... And hopefully this inspired you to try it in some things. That's going to be it for me. Thank you all for watching. And remember, Master Dinner Flies will take us all.